What's up, guys? Shane here again from the Twin Suns Podcast. I wanted to uh, bring you a video today, uh, again, for newer players. Uh, the last few days, we've been making some videos about the uh, economy of Legends of Runeterra, about the different regions, about uh, some of their key mechanics, some of their core features of uh, what they do, their identity, and all that. So today, I wanted to bring you uh, a little bit of a deck building for noobs, right? So just general premise of deck building, some of the rules of construction for deck building, some of the do's, some of the don'ts, and just some of the specifics uh, as we go through, but I won't be making a specific deck in the sense of this is how you need the, the first deck you want to play. A lot of content out there, and I can surely produce a few decks, but really it's based around what regions you like. Um, you know, everyone starts with the same type of cards. They give you some free decks, and there's a seven-day login bonus that gives you a free deck as well, and those cards are used for all different type of things um, and different style of decks, but really whatever regions you work on are going to dictate what decks you want to build first. So this is more of just a, when you go to build your deck, these are some of the rules to follow and these are some of the guidelines that you want to follow. And uh, I might reference Hearthstone a little bit uh, as before just to get some of that. Uh, but before we start, make sure you are uh, subscribed, help us grow a little bit here, leave a comment and uh, Mystic Shot the like button for me. Let's switch over to the uh, live scene here. And here we have uh, the deck builder. So just to back out for a second, under collection here, you can go to decks, you can just look through cards here, you can go to boards, and then these are more of your cosmetic things, but at the top of decks, you can just hit new deck here, and this will take you into the new deck section here, uh, and what'll, what you have uh, option-wise is to show unowned or show owned cards, so that will filter uh, whether it is showing stuff that you own or don't own. These little blips underneath are how many of the cards you own, so if you look here at this champion Fizz, I own three Fizz, so you can tell by these blips being full. I'm not sure I'll be able to find a card that I don't own three of because I own most of them, but essentially one of those blips would be blacked out underneath one of the cards. Um, up here you have a filter here. You can say, I just want to look for units. I just want to look for spells. I want to look for just landmarks and different things like that. You can also even just go by rarity. If you know you only have commons, you want to do commons and hit show unowned, you can do that as well. So it's some pretty cool things on this side, uh, as well as mana cost, obviously, so you can filter by that which is really important for when you're uh, you know, looking for a specific card. And then at the bottom here, you have a couple more options. These are the different sets. So Foundations is the core set. Uh, Rising Tides added Bilgewater. So if you filter by Rising Tides, it will also add what else dropped when Bilgewater dropped in that set. So there is one champion for every other region as well, along with the five Bilgewater champions. And you could also filter by the most recent set, which is all of Targon, but also the champions from the other regions as well. Uh, and at the bottom here is something a little additional. This is like uh, the Discover mechanic in Hearthstone. There's something called Invoke in Runeterra. And what happens is there's these Celestials. It's a select uh, card pool, around 22 cards. And they are uh, specific to that card pool. You can't build with them in your deck. But if you ever wanted to just look at what they are, you can just click that and you can get a look at what they are if you want to build with uh, Targon. So going back here... Uh, now that you're in your deck, remember in Runeterra, uh, when you build a deck, you can pick one region or two regions and that's it. So you have a maximum of two regions to choose from. So for this, we will start with, uh, Shadow Isles and Noxus, just to give an example of what you want to do. So if, if you know you have three at least, which is a common thing to do, then you could, uh, you know, that's a common thing to start with. I mean, you could pair that very well with Noxus. So I'll just pick these two regions because I know Elise is a champion that... Uh, a lot of people, and by a lot of people, I mean everyone starts with at least two copies of. So when you're going through here, uh, something I should have mentioned in the video uh, talking about the economy of lore is the amount of champions that you actually add to your deck. Uh, champions are really good units that have a level up mechanic, which means essentially a mini quest. If you do something for their mini quest, in this case you've attacked with five plus nightfall allies, you level the champion up and he turns into a, a bonus version normally with a stat buff and uh, a different uh, text, or a similar text, but change it up a little bit. In this, you can only actually include here a total of six champions. So you can run three of each, or you could run, you know, six different champions here. You could run whatever you want in that sense. Standard uh, deck here would really be three of each. But again, if you're a new player, you might not have that, so feel free to slot it in. Champions are typically better cost for their mana, especially once leveled. As you can see, three mana for a 5-4 is a ridiculous stat line in both Hearthstone and Legends of Runeterra. But they started a 4-3, which is more on par, but again, they have that level up mechanic uh, that can get them places, or some just have weird abilities as well. But, like I said, you only can run six champions. So it's something I should have mentioned in the economy video because your deck won't just be filled with the ch champions. You only need six champion cards, which keeps the deck cost pretty cheap. So not like uh, in Hearthstone where you could run, 
you know, 10 to 15 legendaries if you really felt like it, which might be unrealistic for some decks, but some decks it might work. Uh, and here, the most of the rarest cards you're going to be able to run is uh, six. So it does keep the deck a little bit cheaper. It's why I should have mentioned it in the economy video. And uh, shout out to somebody on Reddit for mentioning that because it was a really good point that I should have included. Um, but when you're building decks, like I said, you pick two different regions. And then from there, you can start adding units. So if this was going to just be a spider style deck, we would add units that are spiders uh, and units that have good effects with spiders. And I'm just showing you as you add you see how I'm just left clicking here onto anything that I want to add, including these spiders here. And we're just starting to add some of these cards. And I'm just looking for the units right now. I'm not adding anything else. And as you see, I'm adding them. I'm getting to a stack of three. So not only are champions limited to three times, but so are regular cards. You can only run three of each regular card. Now, some tricks over here is if you're in the deck builder side on the left, if you have only uh, two or say one card in here, right here, uh, you see how it only has uh, labeled as one. Obviously, left-clicking it will move the card out of the deck. But if you left-click on the actual number, it'll actually add a card if you have it to your deck. So that's a way to decrease and increase the card on the left side of your deck. That's a tip that I've seen a lot of people actually miss, people who play the game for a very long time. So that's how you can control what you have on this side of the, uh, the board. So typically, for just general deck-building tips, I would start by just adding units about what you want. Um, and just kind of seeing how the unit curve ends up looking. You know, it's a lot like Hearthstone. You want to have a, a goal for your deck where you want to be um, early game or a late game deck. Do you want to run mostly spells? Do you want to run mostly units and etc. And I won't break down the exact deck or anything like that, but up here in the top left, you obviously can name your deck. So we'll call this Spiders because I'm just making a simple Spiders deck. And you can hit this button and this will show you your mana curve, but it also breaks down a few other things, which is really, really nice and important here. Uh, it'll show you your champions, so if you're running a full six champions, it'll be there. This will show you your units, so how many units you actually have in the deck. The difference here, though, this unit is including champions. So you see we only have 24 cards. You can see it in the back here. Um, we, uh, we only have 24 cards total in the deck right now. They're all units, but even though followers and units are separate, our followers and champions aren't the same thing. So a champion is only a champion. A follower is a unit that's not a champion but units contains both champions and followers so no it's slightly confusing and we haven't added any spells yet and landmarks there's only one per region there's only actually five of them out at the moment but there will be more they're very specific like location based cards that are only used in certain decks so really you just don't want to have you know 40 units you want to have a mix of spells and units so i'm going to go back and add some key spells as i go through this deck um, and you know, if you're just looking in Shadow Isles, and I'm talking about Shadow Isles a little bit just because there are some very important uh, starting cards that you get with Shadow Isles. Glimpse Beyond is a very good card for drawing cards. Stalking Shadows is the same, really strong for drawing cards. Vile Feast you should start with, and this is a common as well. It's great because it deals damage and summons a spider, which is really good. Death's Hand's a good spell, and you can just go through and keep adding uh, various things as you go. And again, I'm not making a specific deck. I am just making a deck that seems like it would be an okay early spider rush deck that you don't really need to have a lot of different cards for. So now if you go through, we're at 38 cards. We click back onto this. Now we have 14 spells, 24 units for a total of 38 cards total. You have a 40 card deck in Legends of Rotera as opposed to a 30 card deck uh, in Hearthstone. And... Uh, 14 spells is a decent ratio. Again, it just depends on what your deck wants to do. As a rush deck, uh, you want to be making sure your units are attacking quickly. You have plenty of units, so you're going to hit everything on curve. And your spells are really supporting either drawing more units or getting more units on the board or clearing out important targets. So for something like this, there's plenty of other cards you could add to help the early game process as well. But there's also a couple of good late game bombs that you might want to add. Uh, and if, you know, these are epic cards, so... Captain Farron's a really good late game uh, card as an epic, and I'm you know this deck mostly includes non-epic cards, as it's just kind of a spider rush deck. But you could easily add a Captain Farron, and especially if you're new player, you have one epic wild card. This would be a great card to use it on, as well as like a Harrowing would be really good. A Harrowing just lets you resummon units that died. So just quickly throwing together this deck, we have 25 units, 15 spells, and that's a pretty good ratio. Mainly, we just want to look at the curve of mana now, and you want to see, especially for a spider deck, which is very aggressive and rushing, you want to see a curve that is very heavy on the early side and falls down toward the late side. And we obviously see that in extreme here. We have six one drops all the way up to 15-2, down to eight 
three drops and then three 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 and then just a couple splash at the end so this is obviously a very aggressive and quick deck and this isn't going to win you a, uh, a ton of games at the highest level of play but if you're starting this is a really good uh, starting point and something that you could build relatively quick now swain is something i added you probably won't start with swain but you can easily have Swain and you, or I'm sorry, Elise, which you will start with, and then mix in uh, Draven if you have Draven, or Darius if you have Darius. He's really, really good with spiders as well. So you could even just do all Darius instead of Swain, something along those lines. Use what you have and make the deck that you can. But this is just a quick breakdown of what a deck could look like uh, in Legends of Terror and some of the tips and tricks. Now remember just to highlight it. Uh, left clicking over here will put an additional card left clicking on the card itself will take it out and if you do go over and you're at 41 that'll turn red to know you have too many cards and if you go to save it it won't work um, there's also one other thing as well if you add a seventh champion both the seven out of six will highlight now red because you have too many champions and you have 41 cards so that is one way to show that you have too many cards this top left button if you're wondering is uh, it what you want to actually build the deck under which would be Standard, that's standard. Singleton's an interesting format where you only can run one of cards. It's like building a Reno Jackson deck or something along those lines. But something else that you can do cool is you can change the deck cover. So say you did put Captain Fair in your deck, you could change the deck cover to any unit art. So you could make the art uh, Captain Farron for the deck cover. And then once you're done that, you would just hit done, and then your deck would be saved underneath your decks. You could come back in here, change your cosmetics on the left side with card backs, guardians, and boards, and even emotes. And then you could just take it right in under the play menu into any of your modes. So hopefully, guys, that helps. It's just a really quick breakdown uh, of just how to make a deck in Legends of Runeterra. Some of the rules. So remember, 40 card decks, three of any card, no more, only six champions total, and that's about it. Uh, and two regions, two regions max. You can only build. You could just build with one if you want. And there is effects called allegiance that actually benefit from that. But in general. Two regions is the standard that you're going to see across the board. So, guys, that is the video today. Make sure to uh, subscribe, help us out, comment, like. Really, really appreciate it. And like I said earlier, just mystic shot that like button for me. Until next time, guys.